Well, here in the studio to discuss that and the day's other news are the journalists Katie Grant and Paul McNamee. Welcome to both of you. So it's the end of week one. Um, um, what the highlights been for you, Katie? Oh, gosh. There haven't been any highlights, I wouldn't say. None. I think it's been very... It, 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 they all, they're all in, in a sort of state of overexcitement at the moment because it's week one. They'll, they'll <coughs> calm down a bit by week three and we might get some kind of sense. I mean, I suppose some of the interesting things have been that Ruth Davidson has come out very clearly for um, tuition fees and she's got so, some sort of grip on, um, um, on, on how things actually work. But I think the really interesting thing at the moment is that the, the SNP dilemma... They're probably going to walk the election, so, you know, what does it matter, really? But they, they've always set themselves up as a kind of Robin Hood, the Robin Hood party, you know, down with the rich and let's uh, tax the rich until the pips squeak and give it all to the poor. But now they're the party of government, they can no longer do that. So for the first time, they're actually having to behave in an election like a party of government. So perhaps that's been the highlight of the week, seeing them try and, you know, sell this to their more enthusiastic supporters. And there's been a lot of talk about taxing the rich this week. There's the 60p top rate from the Greens, 50p top rate from, from Labour. I mean, do, do you think that matters to the voters, Paul, or is it just symbolic to be saying we, we, we might do something radical with, with well, tax powers? No, I think tax, of course it matters. It, people, everybody pays tax. Nobody wants to pay too much tax. There is a sense that Scotland will claim to be more social democratic, therefore would be welcome. Some people would welcome paying a little more if it helped particular social services. But at the end of the day, nobody wants to spend more money than they, or to give more of their wages than they have to. So yes, it's important to people. But I think. But that that whole debate about the, the top rate, you know, where you found the SNP government in a position of saying, well, we'd like to have it as 50p, but actually we're worried that you know the rich wouldn't pay it, was was quite an interesting discussion to be had. Whereas the other parties were were trying to sort of out radical. But them. I, well, yeah, I, th I think the point that and you made there that the. When the SNP now is a party of government, they do have the power to do these things, but are remaining still, and they're not doing anything. That that does seem to be the the, the tale of the week, because they they had a the, there was a very harsh editorial in the Herald today about uh, the SNP not acting on the poverty czar when they'd said that they would. You know that there was a report on how to fix social injustice, how to help the poor not be as poor as they would be. Nicholas Sturgeon had promised to act on it, but hadn't. Now. That doesn't seem to have had any, apart from the editorial in the Herald, it doesn't seem to have had any damaging effect on the SNP. And it, chances are it won't. No matter what they say or no matter what they do, they're going to end up maybe one or two seats up, around 70-odd seats, and they're sitting comfortably. So it doesn't seem to be in their interest to rock the boat on anything. Therefore, it means that this could be a really long, dull campaign. What we want is some mishaps and some people to stick their, their foot in. We need UKIP to blow it now and again. Well, let's, let's hope it's not going to be dull. We've got to have something to talk about for the next five weeks. Yeah. But, well, I, I mean, there have been two televised mm -hmm. debates. I mean, did you, did you think anyone came out on top in any of those? Not, but, no, not really, because the politicians all sound the same. I know they're not all saying the same thing. I'm not suggesting they are. But, um, but they all sound the same. Perhaps it is because it's week one. But they're all overemphasising. They're all over, uh, sort of overexcitable. Um, and I think people just, just like switch puppies. off. They do. They sound like trained puppies, and that's almost worse. Um, and so you're not getting anything very radical or very interesting. Um, we know what they're going to say before they say it. And there's so much guff spouted, which doesn't really mean anything. <laughs> there, there, that is true, but I think, I think Willie Rennie, of all the, the party leaders, is the one who's shown some kind of thinking and intellectual depth that perhaps you hadn't seen before, because when they had the face-to-face the -face and each of them was asking the others questions, standing in the middle in that weird uh, manner that they had, which, which worked to a degree, it was good TV, he was the one who seemed to have the most substance, both to, to questions and responses, and it wasn't necessarily just what spin doctors had said, look, you go out, you better get that line out there. Perhaps they had, but he just presented it a bit better. And, and yet, as, as you've mentioned, Katie, the, the, the polls don't appear to shift. Though, as we know from the last election, the general election, the posters can get it very badly wrong. Research for the British Polling Council today found that polls before the last year's general election were among the least accurate since surveying began over 70 years ago. Do you think the public look more sceptically uh, on polls now because of 
last year? I think they do. I also think that the public know what polls are about, and so quite often the pollsters, uh, they, we, you know, we give them the wrong answers. We're bored of being manipulated and asked for things. We're asked, everything has a kind of, um, you know, feedback thing now. You're, we're asked all the time. You make a, you buy a pair of shoes, and you've got to send some beastly feedback to somebody or other. So I think we're getting, we're getting wise to that. And often we just want to get rid of them off the phone. We don't even bother to give them the right answer. We might give them the right answer when we come out of the polling booth, and that's of course after the 2015 election when the truth actually yeah. came out. Well, and it turns out apparently there weren't any shy Tories at all. That... No. <laughs> but it, it, was that, it was the missing block, it was the undecided, and the, it, the answer was staring us right in the face for the whole of the last Westminster election. There were, there were some people who were, were shifting a little on each, on left and right, but that big block in the middle who said they were undecided and didn't know which way they were going, that's where the answer was. We just chose not to really investigate it. But people who said they're undecided, chances are they're going to stay with the status quo. So it showed. It was there for us. It's maybe our fault for not investigating the pollsters enough. Well, I don't know. This is, I think what happens sometimes is that the polls come out, immediately the politicians want to react. So they don't give any time for thought. They just react. They change their story. They tweak things. And the whole of the media then goes berserk on talking about possible um, you know, links between the Labour Party and the SNP and coalitions and this and that and the other. And before you know it, the poll itself is slightly forgotten. But all the kind of afterwash of it is then, then gets an importance which it doesn't really deserve. Well, well, how much do you think that the polling actually shifts? to the result it's hard well it's hard to say because obviously there was some reaction as Katie said there, there was some reaction when it, the, the idea of fear when the Labour and, and the SNP were going to go together that may, might have made the Tories act in a certain way okay I'm sorry we're out of time we'll have to leave it there that's it for tonight and for this week thanks for watching Andrew's back on